Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys how to find the power series expansion for sine x and also cosine x, sin 30 at 0. And yes, some people call this the Taylor series because we are going to use the Taylor formula. And some people also call this to be the Macron's series because we have a Taylor series, sin 30 at 0. But all in all, they are just power series, right? Cool. Anyway, I will be focusing on getting a power series expansion for sine first. So you should have the table right here. This time though, we need a little bit more entries. You'll see why. Anyway, let's get going. I will have the zeros derivative, namely the function itself. So I'll just start it at sine x. Differentiate this, I get cosine x. Differentiate this again, I get negative sine x. And do it again, I get negative cosine x. And when you differentiate negative cosine x, you get, yes, you get the sine x back. Now, you pretty much repeat, and we'll just uh, write down more terms right here. And lastly, you have the negative cosine x. So just make a table like this. Now, I will plug in 0 into all the x, and then calculate and divide it by the corresponding n factorial. First, when I put 0 in here, we have sine 0, which is just 0, over 0 factorial. That's over 1. It's still 0. Next, I put 0 here. Cosine 0 is 1. So we have 1 over 1 factorial. So we have this. Next, put 0 in here. We have negative sine 0, which is negative 0, which is still 0, over 2 factorial is still 0. Next, you put 0 right here, you get negative 1 over 3 factorial. Put 0 here, you get 0. Put 0 here, you get positive 1 over, and then you have the 5. 5 factorial. Put 0 here, you get 0. Put 0 here, you get negative 1 over 7 factorial, like this, right? So here is the small trouble. If you want to write a formula for the sequence, 0 this, 0 that, 0 this, 0 that, it's kind of hard. So this is what I will do with you guys. So let me write this down for you guys. Thanks to the dad, Taylor, we know now sin x equals, let's put on the expanded form first. The first term from the table is going to be just 0. Next term, we add 1 over 1 factorial times x to the first power. So let me just put this down. And then we add, next term is 0. And then we add, the next term is negative, 1 over 3 factorial x to the third power, and then so on. Next, we have the 0. Technically, it's 0 times x to the fourth power, but it doesn't really matter. Next, you have plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the fifth power, and then when you add 0, and then lastly, you have the plus negative 1 over 7 factorial x to the 7th power. And this right here keeps on going forever. Now, if you put this down in the series form, you see that, of course, 0 plus this, 0 plus that, the zeros, they don't matter, right? Another interesting thing to look at is that sine x, we know that's an odd function. Right here, you only see it odd number, especially odd exponents. That's kind of odd, but that's just how it is. It's cool, isn't it? Okay, so this is what we will do. When you add with a bunch of zero, of course, there's zero, you can just ignore that. So instead of saying this is the first term, no, let's not worry about that. I will call this to be my new first term. And to do this, we have to do it carefully. I will have to, new, I will have to use the new index. So instead of n, I will just put on k. This right here is technically my k equals 0. This is my first term, and that's begin with 0. Next, I will ignore that, and then I will just look at this, and I will say this is my k equals 1, and then continue. This right here is k equals 2, and then you have k equals 3. This is why we have to have this many entries. So that's pretty much the idea. Now I can write this down for you guys. We know sine x is equal to, I will just put this down in the series form right here. I will write down k goes from 0 to infinity. And then, well, on the top I have 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. So we need to have that alternating factor, namely negative 1 to some power. 
because the first term is positive, so and then also the k is begin at zero, so k is enough right here. Now the denominator and then also power the number wise they match. They are just r numbers. And to get r numbers, we can just do two k minus well two k plus one because k is sorry as yes, zero. So two k plus one. And then of course you do the factorial. And to do this real quick, you can just ask yourself, how can you go from 0 to 1, 1 to 3, 2 to 5, and 3 to 7? We know 2 times 3 is 6, and then plus 1. That's exactly that formula, 2k plus 1. That's pretty much it. And then for the power, it match with this. So you can just put down x, goes, uh, x to the 2k plus 1 power like this. That's cool. So this right here is pretty much it. However, usually, People still like to write down the power series with n. Yes. So once you get this done, just ignore all the k's again and change them back to n. Okay. So perhaps you can just imagine, right? You can just imagine. This right here are my scratch work. In the end, this is what I will present to you guys. We know sine x, this is equal to the series as n goes from 0 to infinity. You really have to make sure that you know the difference that this n and this n are different. Okay? Uh, just a way of to re-index. That's all. Don't let the n bother you too much. Anyway, and then you have negative 1 to the n's power over 2n plus 1. Factorial this. And then x to the 2n plus 1 power like that. Of course, we need to figure out the radius of convergence. I will show you. Let's do the work right here. So just from last time, as I told you, r is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. And look at this as your coefficient sequence. This is your cn. What you do is you do cn first. So I'll put down negative 1 to the nth power over 2n plus 1 inside. And then you put a factorial. And then you are going to divide it by cn plus 1. And that's the reciprocal of cn plus 1. In other words, put n plus 1 into all the n's here and do the reciprocal. So here I will have negative 1 to the n plus 1. This time it becomes in the denominator like this. And then I will put down n plus 1 into this n. It looks like this. 2 times n plus 1 and then plus 1. And then you do the factorial of that. So that's the idea. And the absolute value will kill the negative, so that's really good. Now, simplify the factorials. Let's look at the bigger factorial. This right here is 2n plus 2 plus 1, namely 2n plus 3. Do the factorial. You can just write this as 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2, and then 2n plus 1, and so on. You can just put a factorial here, and you see this and that cancel. That's nice. The negative 1 to the whatever power in the absolute value, they don't matter. And now, when n goes to infinity, you see you have this on the top. So they will go to infinity. So r is infinity here. So I'll just put this down right here. r is infinity. And when r is infinity, you should be happy because the interval of convergence is just negative infinity to positive infinity. That's it. This is for sine x. Now, how can we get cosine x? Do I have to go through all this again? Maybe I'll erase the board right now. Oh, it didn't work. No, it's okay. <laughs> because we know the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and we can totally differentiate this power series. So I will write this down for you guys. Um, I will just put on cosine x. This right here, I will look at this as the derivative. Let's just put this down. The derivative of this guy, the sine x, which is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, and we have negative 1 to the nth power over 2n plus 1 factorial, and then x to the 2n plus 1, like that. Now, how do you differentiate? Yes, very easy. Put the power to the front, and then minus 1. That's it. And you see, when you put the power to the front, you have this 2n plus 1 right here. This right here, you have 2n plus 1 factorial. You can look at this as 2n plus 1 times 2n in a parentheses. Crucial, OK? 2n right here in a parentheses, and then you do the factorial. This and that will cancel. 
So now, you'll see that cosine x is equal to, once you differentiate this guy, you get the series as n goes from. This is still going from 0 to infinity, because when you differentiate the first term of sine x, you get 1. So you didn't lose that term, so you will still go from 0 to infinity. So this stays. And we see that we have negative 1 to the nth power over 2n. In a parenthesis, you do the factorial. And then on the side, you multiply by x to the 2n plus 1 minus 1, which is, of course, just 2n power. Yes, cosine x is an uh, even function. Even power. And then you divide by the even factorial. And it's alternating. It's really cool. And the good news is that when you differentiate the power series, the radius of convergence stays the same. So we still have r being infinity. But when you differentiate the power series, you really have to check the convergence at the endpoint of the interval of convergence. But since this is just going from negative infinity to plus infinity, technically there's no such thing as endpoints. So you know you can just go ahead and put down i is negative infinity to plus the infinity. Good news, we are done. So this is for cosine x. And of course, this right here was for the sine x. Right? Maybe you guys can leave a comment down below. Let me know which one you guys like more. Anyway, this is it.